doesn't love a really good homemade bread? In fact, I couldn't even wait to take a bite out of this one. <laughs> Our friend Lisa Martin in the comments section below asked me to share a good bread recipe and I've got one for you today. Let's get baking. Today I'm going to make a basic homemade bread and this recipe actually calls for two loaf pans. I'm using a stone pan and you just need to use what you have and absolutely you do not need to have a stone pan. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to make one loaf of bread and I'm also going to make bread sticks. The first thing I'm going to do is take my yeast out and measure it so that it can start to warm up because you don't want to use ice cold yeast. Now you see I have active dry and I have bread machine instant yeast. So you want to be aware of what you're using because there's instructions on the back that's going to give you best practices of how to use the particular yeast that you're using. On the back of my package of yeast, on my bottle of yeast, it says that two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast is a quarter of an ounce. And this recipe calls for a quarter of an ounce. And by the way, I'll definitely have the recipe linked in my description box below. So I'm taking two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And I do this first so it has a chance to warm up a little bit before I start using it because you don't want cold yeast. You also don't want to put anything cold into your dough. A lot of times you might have a recipe which calls for milk, which this one does not. If you use a recipe that calls for milk, you just want to warm your milk up before adding it to your dough recipe. With my yeast set out, I'm now going to get out all my other ingredients, which is two and a quarter cups of warm water, three tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of canola oil, and six and a quarter to six and three quarters cups of bread flour. Today I'm using all-purpose flour. If you use a bread flour, it is a lot easier to get a successful bread, but I would like to use the all-purpose uh, so I can show you that in case you don't have access to bread flour. I'm also making sure to use an apron because I am a messy cook and I'm gonna have flour absolutely everywhere. I have two and a quarter cups of warm water and the recipe says to have the water between 110 and 115 degrees. If you do not have a thermometer, what I do is I use warm water and it's right before it has a bite to it. Right before it's kind of a little bit too warm, that is when it's perfect. So I'm putting in my yeast that I've already measured out and to that I'm going to add my half teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to put in my water. You don't want to skip the sugar, it feeds the yeast. Now I'm going to whisk it together. Of course, if you don't have a whisk, you could definitely use a fork. Now, this is so important. You're going to let this stand until you see foamy bubbles on the top. So while we're waiting for this, we're going to go on to the next step. I'm going to add the remaining three tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, and again, you don't want to skip the salt. I know a lot of people are watching salt in their diets and they're going to be tempted to skip the salt, but salt is important to the texture of the bread. When you're making bread, you're doing chemistry and each ingredient has its place. And then we're going to add three of the cups of flour. And I'm going to whisk this together. You could also sift it together, honestly. Might be a little bit easier than whisking, actually. Now you can see I am getting some bubbling here. And that is what you want. Okay. To my yeast mixture, I'm adding two tablespoons of canola oil. And I'm gonna stir that around. Now at this point, you would add this to the flour mixture and then beat it together. So I'm gonna do the opposite and I'm adding my flour mixture to my yeast mixture. Now we're gonna beat this together until it's smooth. As it turns out, my blender is a little aggressive and it's gonna spray this everywhere. So I'm going back to the old fashioned way and I'm getting out my trusty whisk. <laughs> this 
stage is also important because your yeast is continuing to do its work and to rise. You don't want to use old yeast. You want to make sure that it's not expired. And I'm going to show you, I just this minute blended this and I'm already getting some bubbles. See, you can see right there. See that? We're already getting some bubbling going on and that's what you want to see. The bubbles are so very important. Now we're going to add our remaining three to three and a quarter cups of flour. So what I've done is I've measured it out here in a bowl and I'm going to be adding it one half a cup at a time. You want a soft dough. So you are using your judgment a little bit on how much of this you're going to add. If you can't mix it in anymore, then it's time to stop. Now, if you have a hard time getting bread to come out correctly, I'm gonna give you a few tips. Make sure that your yeast is not old. Make sure by putting it with a tablespoon of sugar and some water, proof it first before you use it. You could make sure that you're using bread flour or test out different types of flours. You could also be over kneading your bread. So it should be able to stretch like two to four inches. If it doesn't do that, it's possible that you've kneaded it too much. So no more rings for this stage. I'm just gonna kind of see what I can work into the dough. If you're a regular viewer to my channel, stay till the end of this video. I have a very important announcement about a decluttering challenge that actually has already started. If you're having this problem that I'm having right now, I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'm gonna show you a solution. My hands are washed, I'm gonna spray them with some oil. And that's just gonna help them not to stick to the flour quite as much. I feel like I'm just about done. This really, um, I can feel that it's soft. I can feel that additional flowers not really getting in there. Okay, so as I push it down with the heel of my hand on the bottom. What's on the bottom here isn't really getting incorporated very much into my dough. So I'm actually stopping just shy of six total cups. Okay. So now we're gonna knead, we're gonna go into kneading and I actually was kind of kneading it. You could knead it right in the bowl that's what I tend to do is to knead it in the bowl and that way it doesn't make so much of a mess. So I'm gonna keep it right here I'm gonna, and I'm gonna knead it right in my bowl. Plus, um, I already have flour in my bowl, so I don't have to worry about it sticking. So when it starts to get sticky, I am sprinkling it with a little bit of flour. And I'm gonna, you wanna knead it for about eight to 10 minutes. When, my, when the bottom of my bowl gets sticky, I just put some flour on it. This would be a good time to watch a YouTube video. <laughs> Use the poke test when you're proofing the dough. Over proofing the dough, leaving it to rise too long can limit the rise of the bread if it's left too long because eventually it will sink back down. Underproofing can also be a problem. So your proofing needs to be right on. When you have proofed it the right amount of time, you should be able to push it with your finger and it will slowly come back up. So you wanna be kneading your dough until it's smooth and elastic. So let me just show you here. It's nice and smooth and it's definitely elastic. So all that was to activate the gluten and get it going so that you have a nice textured bread. So now what I'm gonna do is again, we're using the same bowl because I like to save on dishes. 
So we're gonna place it in a grease bowl. So I'm just gonna lift it out, grease my bowl. Some spray. And then I'm gonna turn it once so that the top is greased. Now it's time to let the dough rise. And I'm gonna show you two different methods for doing this. You can proof your dough in the oven. All you need to do is set it to 170 degrees and put your bowl of dough in the oven. But if you don't wanna run your oven, you don't have to. And I'm gonna show you another way to use your oven without having to turn it on and use that electricity. And then after that, I'm gonna show you a method you can use with your crock pot. This is an important step because right now we're in the winter and the weather is cold. And so you need a warm, humid spot to proof your dough, which for many of us, like me living in Maine, that's not an easy feat. So I have my boiling water in a baking dish on the bottom rack. And then I'm gonna take my dough that I have covered and I'm gonna put it on the top or middle rack, wherever it fits so that it can be the highest. And I'm gonna leave it in there for an hour and a half or till it's doubled in size. If your oven isn't available, that's not a problem because what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill your slow cooker halfway up with water and I'm gonna start it out with very warm or hot water and then you're gonna put it on low. Now that my crock pot is put on low, I'm gonna put the lid on upside down. I'm gonna cover it with a dish towel and I'm gonna just gonna set my dough right on top. And again, about an hour and a half or until it's doubled in size. I've had my dough rising for an hour and a half, so let's take it out of the oven and see what it looks like. Ooh. Can you see that? That is beautiful. So now we're gonna punch it down. And then I'm gonna divide it, half of it in my bread pan that will be greased and half of it I'll be separating for breadsticks. You can see it's all mushed down now. See that? What I'm gonna do is, they say to put it on a flour surface and divide it, but since I'm punching it down anyway, I'm just gonna divide it with a knife. Dividing it in two. Here's my bread pan. I'm gonna hit it with an olive spray, or a um, oil spray, olive spray. I'm gonna put it in my bread pan, spread it out so that it's the size of a loaf of bread or the shape of a loaf of bread. I'm gonna be covering it again and letting it rise again. For my breadsticks, even though I had parchment paper, I am still gonna spray it just in case. I'm not taking any chances of it being a mess. This is very unscientific. I'm just pulling off some, shaping it, stretching it, laying it down. Quick, they don't have to be pretty. It's a breadstick. And we're just gonna, ooh, you can smell that yeast. So we'll let these rise and it will be something that we can dip into sauce. Before you bake them, you could sprinkle some garlic powder and Parmesan cheese, and you could put some butter on the top, some melted butter, and make them really yummy. Another thing I've done before is I just shape the dough myself in the shape I want, and I would do one for each person in the family, and then everyone got their own small little loaf of bread. Maybe I should have made these bigger. I don't know, I might have too much. We'll see. <laughs> They're getting bigger as I go, because I don't have room. I have used the oven method for proofing this, so I still have my water in the oven. The oven still seems warm, so I'm just gonna cover these and put them right back in the oven where they came from. And that's gonna be another hour to an hour and a half. But I'm gonna keep an eye on it because it actually, I could have taken them out a little earlier and you don't want to overproof the dough, of course. This is what my bread looks like coming out of the oven um, from its final proofing. And these are my very 
chunky breadsticks, and now I'm gonna put them in a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Now it's time for the best part. It's time to cut open my bread. And here are my breadsticks. We're gonna see what those look like. And I'm gonna ask you to drop a like if you enjoy homemade bread. I think they need to be ugly so that they look homemade. So how does that look? All right, now let's try this bread. Cut it right down the middle so you can see. I think that's perfect. As glad as I am that it looks good, it's more important that it tastes good. So this is the real test. Mm. That is an excellent bread. It's light and fluffy and not gummy at all. That's really amazing. Let me know if you try it. In the month of February, I've joined six other YouTubers and we're coming to you with a decluttering challenge. It's gonna be so much fun. On February 1st, we'll declutter one item and get rid of it. On February 2nd, two items. On February 3rd, three items. All the way to February 28th when we finally get rid of 28 items in one day. All seven of us are gonna post an update video on Sundays. So the first one will be this Sunday, February 7th. I hope you'll join me in the challenge. I even have a free printable that Michelle from My Everyday Wife Life has provided that I'll have linked in my description box as well. So if you're interested, let's get to cluttering. And remember as always that God loves you and I love you too and I can't wait to see you next time.